All right, welcome, welcome. I'm live. I'm back and I'm black. Uh, right here on WSYP 95.1, Sankofa Revolutionary Radio. I don't want to waste any time. Of course, we got our special, very special guest on the air with us. Uh, you know, I don't think this brother need an introduction. I want to uh, present him uh, to our audience here in Birmingham, Alabama, Sankofa Revolutionary Radio, Dr. Kamal Kamban. This brother, this elder, uh, with permission, his permission to move forward, has authored at least 17 books. If I say anything wrong, Dr. Kamal, you, you correct me, uh, elder. Uh, 17 books, including Black Guerrilla Warfare in America, Food, Health, and You, Why, Why the Good Die Young, The Last Black Man Standing, The Last, last Book, and The Declaration was written as a response to his internationally Famous speech, and you know what that is over at Howard University in 2005. Dr. Kamal Campbell, welcome to the Business Hour. Hey, Dr. Rich, brother, I appreciate the opportunity to spend time with you and our family. Oh, oh it's all, man. Look, man. Hey, we, we, uh, we owe it to you. Uh, we owe much, much more uh, to brothers like you uh, that come through once in a lifetime, man. And anything we can do for you and your family, you, you let us know. Uh, here at WSYPLP 95.1. So you're at home, good brother. And I want to thank you for, for agreeing to come on and do this lecture because I, we know you, you very seldom do lectures. Uh, and I know you're not on social, uh, social network. So, uh, you know, folks... Now, now explain that, Doc. Uh, social network, we, I call it a huge surveillance system uh, for white folks. But I'm going to why you don't uh, uh, interact on social uh, network. Oh, well, uh, my son, Nana, Dr. Kwame uh, Obale Kanban, calls it a digital integration. And, you know, a lot of our people are caught up in the social media. And uh, I'm just not with really writing like that. You know, I just think that it's a waste of time. There's, uh, you know, they create uh, what I call, you know, the lemon and paradox for us. It has some benefits. But it also has an awful effect. So since we can't distinguish between what is really good for us and what's bad for us, we decide what I call against ourselves. A lot of people are just caught up in the social media. And, and I have this expression that if you see the majority of our people doing a certain thing, you can bet that it's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Uh, one of my expressions is that uh, white people do almost everything right uh, exactly wrong, and black people do almost everything wrong, perfectly right. And so we know how to do something wrong, the things that are wrong, perfectly right. And I think social media is really deleterious to our people because there's a lot of foolishness on there from what I understand, a lot of nonsense. And it's a little bit of a lot of And I think we want to do that. I mean, why? That's it. From these white and I think if African black people, those ones are synonymous. Detached from that social media, I think we'll get a lot more done because it's, you know, we won't be wasting our time. Hey, I, I, agree, I agree with that. Now, I, I, I'll stay off as much as I can, Doc. We have, uh, we have with us this morning the living legend, Dr. Kamal Cambone. And I'm going to be straight with you. This brother, do not, uh, and, I, and I repeat, do not tiptoe through the tulips. And uh, I want to remind our listeners of that. Uh, Dr. Campbell, you, you know, get into this thing, man. A lot of folks say we're at war. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I, Doc, I don't, see, I don't see us fighting, man. Explain, explain that, you know, what, what you and I have said. We are at war, no doubt about it. Why are people are not fighting, uh, Doctor? I said, when I worked there in around 1981, 82, I did say that we were at war. But after deeper reflection and consideration, I... I and as I evolve my understanding of the scale and the scope of this global war, I came to the realization that you know, we're not at war. War is being waged against us. That's right. That's right. Because we have not inflicted casualties on the white enemy. So we're not at war. And that's why I kind of shy away from the designation of doctor. Because a doctor is here to uh, solve problems, but I think these titles also get to fear with our ability 
effectively the data was more than double. So I shy away from doctor and um, you know these these, uh, these alphabet letters that you separate us uh, continually. Yeah. So we're not at war. War is being waged against us. And uh, I know that we use this phrase warrior scholar. And I don't necessarily see myself as a scholar. I just write down what I see happening on the planet, whether it's on the white side of the so-called chessboard or the black side. I just write down my observation. Yeah, yeah and, and I appreciate that. Doc, get, get into the different types of... Uh, uh, th th these areas of war that, that are waged against us, the psychological warfare, biological and chemical. Get into that a little bit. Okay, I think it, it goes back to the one I started in 1973, 1974. I was serious, but I wasn't necessarily conscious. And I was in New York City, and you know, I had a, a situation where I really fully understood the white male, and how demonic and deceitful the white male is. And that's when I started to change. And in part because I realized that there was more things placed against us in different areas. I couldn't, it wasn't crystallized at that time, but in these different areas. So I created uh, some phrases that, to words that did not exist. And after looking at black people, I realized that we were committing different forms of subtle suicide. That the body he right calls it, characterized it as mental suicide, and I just extended that and broke it down into the different forms of subtle suicide. And the different forms now, at this point, for me, comes in the form of psychological, emotional subtle suicide. Now when I say we're committing subtle suicide, this is not through necessarily any fault of our own. This is how the global system of white terror domination has been set up. Now you notice I say white terror domination, I don't say white supremacy because as I see it, white people are not supreme. They dominate by the use of terror and deceit. Involved in uh, sex trading, uh, money laundering, arms dealing, drugs, and an assortment of other cesspoolian activities. And I call them the cesspool people because they've been belched out of the bowels of the cesspool. Set up this, if you go from left to right, this dynamic because they realize that they can. They can get to us in all these different areas. So let's see how they set it up first, and then we'll deal with the subtle suicide aspect. Because we have been sunk up into white pathology, and that forces us into subtle suicide activities. So the way it looks from left to right is psychological. These are the systems that they've set up, psychological slash emotional. Next to that is cultural slash history. Not history, twistery. This that is economics. And under economics, it deals with our uh, people, environment, land, resources, and values. This all comes under the economic system on the white side of the board. Next, they set up what I call, uh, most people call it miseducation. I call it misconception because the concept. The concept is the basis for all thought and action. And so they set up misconception. We can say miseducation, miseducation, now I got the Kwame Kanban calls it anti-education, but I also call it uh, from our point of view, it's when we engage in it, we are like pro-savages. That's who these white people are. They are savages. And when we engage in their activities, we are pro-savages. And actually, we're playing defense for them. So after the um, education system, then, they, then there's a health system, health slash physical. Next to that is uh, their religious system. And under religion, that deals with 
as if that deals with faith, deals with uh, idols, and the S stands for symbols, and the M stands for mythology. So we get swept up into these big symbols and mythology, etc. And then next to religion, we have the social, and that deals with the different tribes that we form ourselves into. And there's a good book by Dr. Bhatri Shikari. I don't know the exact title, but it deals with mysticism, primitivism, tribalism. And so this is part of the social class. So we set up these different games, these different classes, that we, whereby we separate ourselves. And that's what their system is designed to do, get us to separate ourselves, just like they did in the Berlin Conference. Uh, 1884, 1885. So this is the social structure. And then the political is next. None of their political system, they are always at war. They are killers. They are murderers. They engage in contrary addiction, you know, say one thing and do something else. And I have this little expression dealing with their political system that we get caught up in. It's uh, the letters. D A slash W O O G F R A C T S. That stands for, I'm dealing with these whiteies now. That stands for, under their political system, B A stands for break all slash weasel out of good faith rules, agreements, contracts, and treaties signed. So this is in part their political system. And then there are other aspects. I have uh, MST over MST. Uh, I'm sorry, MST over MMOST. That stands for how they're coming against us in math, science, and technology, over matter, motion, space, and time. So this is how this system is set up, and this is how they come against us in all these different areas. A biological chemical in the health. But, but the first assault, in my estimation, is the psychological assault. And in the first part of the psychological assault is the uh, physical assault on the brain, basically through vaccines and foods. And when the brain of a baby is assaulted, the receptor sites are dampened and hampered from receiving correct information. So, Brother Anthony, you and your staff, and those who are conscious who are trying to save our people from destruction and death, you're talking to them and talking to them, and you realize, man, how come I'm not reaching them? That's because of the physical destruction that has taken place and the blockage in their neural, uh, their neural pathway. And uh, so this is part of the subtle suicide that we engage in uh, to destroy ourselves. So this is a little rundown on how their system is set up. And then we have to go into detail if you go right from left to right in the outline that I've just designed. All right, that's, that's very important then. Now, I was going to ask, I'm glad you got into that because I was going to ask you about that. You broke it down like, like a scientist, man. Uh, the 10 windows, uh, if you're looking down from the 8th floor, looking at those 10 windows, and you just got into it a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, the ancestor Steve Biko uh, said, the greatest tool in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And uh, you mentioned ancestor Bobby Wright, who, who, who you got to liberate the mind, according to Bobby Wright, uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Cambon. Said, Let, tell me, man, how can we do that when we continue time and time again to give our babies over to our oppressor. Well, this is, you know, I think the thing about it, you know, we've talked about a lot of these issues for a long, long time. I was going back over the destruction of black civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams. Now, this has been a 5,000-year battle with these enemies. And if you write these letters down, W-A-J, Capital F, lowercase F, K A I C, parenthesis, M dash B, parenthesis. This stands for W A J, stands 
a white, Arab, Japanese, capital F, I can't say that word on your radio program, but it's the F word, lowercase F, fake, the J stands for Jew, the A stands for Asians, the I stands for Indians, the East Indians, the C stands for Chinese, the M in the parenthesis stands for the Mexicans, and the B stands for the Brazilians at the higher level. So these represent all of the enemies of African people. The whites, the Arabs, the Japanese, the fake Jews, the uh, Asians, that's East India, uh, East Indians, they are like the Jews. They are the blood suckers of the East Africans. And then you have the, uh, the Chinese. And all of this demonstrates that we have no allies on planet Earth. So we, can, we continually talk about these same issues over and over again. And I decided years ago that as I evolved my understanding, I was, I was jumping off of this treadmill. I was jumping off of this. I refused to be followed to this merry-go-round on a porcelain horse going over the same stuff over and over again. I'm coming in and I'm saying, yo, we need to have a once-and-for-all solution to the biggest problem on planet Earth. And uh, so everybody has talked about all these issues already. Now, I, I have to let by saying it right the duration. And most people don't know how to respond to that. So I'm going to give you some appropriate ways to respond to black liberation. If I was in black liberation, you could say the ones that for all solution. That would be a, an appropriate response. I could say black liberation. A good response would be the crystal clear pure solution. I could say black liberation. You could say no doubt we are bound to win. And if you don't want to look like you're square and you don't know and you're not happy, you don't know what's going on, uh, you can say, uh, if I say black liberation, you can say, yo, that's what's really up, or yo, that's what's up. So these are appropriate responses that people can create. We have to create our own words and our own concepts to fit the situation that we're in. So we talk about schools. You know, we talked about that. Everybody talked about the schools. And so I wrote in a book entitled To Heal the People. And I've been on this thing about 25 years because I taught at an HBCU for 18 years. And I got a chance to actually see the misconceptions, miseducation, and pro-savage behavior of faculty and students. And so I wrote this article entitled The Class Case for uh, educational malpractice lawsuit. And when I look and I talk to, I don't know, at least eight or ten lawyers to see how we could put a, a class action lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Education and declare that they are engaging in educational malpractice. And I actually went down to the State Department here in North Carolina and I got uh, books and books of data on test scores and grades. And I was going to say, and they, why do you say, oh, black people are intellectually inferior, you know the game they run. And I was going to use their same statistics that we score in the low percentile on standardized, so-called standardized tests. We drop out, our grade averages are low, et cetera, et cetera. I was going to use those same statistics to demonstrate that on their side, on the white side, that they are engaging in educational malpractice. And I have an article in one of my books, and my books contain all kinds of articles and pictures and websites. And one article is a, a judge in, actually in North Carolina, dealing with the situation of busing, said that the schools are engaged in academic genocide. <clears throat> so if they're engaged in, and they are engaged in academic genocide, then perhaps, I'm not saying that a lawsuit will turn the tide, but the point is to stop them and have one part of the system fight against the other part of the system. Because we are fighting against a system. And you cannot 
don't defeat the system with a program. You need the system. So this is why we have designed these different formations to help us see the, the overarching picture so that we can ultimately be victorious in this war. Yeah. Yeah, th thank you for that, Dr. Campbell. Hey, look, how do you respond to those listeners out there, Dr. Campbell? We, uh, you know, all over, all over the U.S. and the world, we, we got blacks killing blacks, uh, emulating uh, the white oppressor. How do you respond to those people out there and saying, uh, what, what about this black-on-black -black crime? Well, I think, rather than going into that, all they have to do is just go and listen to Dr. Amos Wilson. Black-on-black violence is service of white, Domination. So he has crystallized his understanding about how this whole thing has been set up for us to kill ourselves. And, you know, they have few self hatred in us, etc. So I don't respond to some things. It's good things, and I know it's hard, it's horrific, this killing of ourselves. These young people in this book, it's horrific. And it's a pandemic. And the only way to solve that problem is for us to come up with a once and for all solution to the biggest problem on planet Earth. Now, in addition to this idea of the once and for all solution, once we decide to make up our minds that we want to solve this problem and stop playing these little games that the way has put us in, in these, little, these little silos, you know, NAACP, Urban League, Core, uh, the Boule, the Link, the uh, Jack and Jill, the, the Masons, the Nation of Islam, the Hebrew Israelites, the Moors. You know, we got all these little silos that everybody is embedded in, and I call this a multi-lithic solo suicide activity. And on the other side of the board, the whitey is monolithic. They have a monolithic agenda of the statistical extermination of African people worldwide. They are in full agreement. They will set up all these little fake things, transform foreign relations, trilateral commission, build the bird group, the Federal Reserve, the FDA, USDA, CIA, FBI. They're all white males. And this those who saw, you know, we think, oh, this one is good, this one is bad. If all white males are against all African people, all white females are against all African people. Now, some of those whites might do something good, but as Elijah Muhammad said, there ain't no good in them. So if we keep playing these things, we're going to be off the planet. And this is why I wrote these books, The, the Last Black Man Standing, which is downloadable online. These are all e-books at this point. And it outlines what's going on on the black side of the chessboard. The declaration that outlines what's going on and traces the history of genocide against us uh, from time to memorial up until the time the book was published. So this is what I recommend. This is the assignment. I always give assignments. I'm a college professor or a former professor. And I give assignments. So the assignment is to download the last black man standing, download the declaration, go and get the books, give the parents. The full title is You Should Be Ashamed of Your Nice But Do the Parents, Volume 1, Volume 2. The other book, The Blackest Book, Volume 1. The Blackest Book, Volume 2, I think is about 450 pages. Another one is entitled Messages from the Ancestors. So these are just some of the titles that I have produced. And we talk about the production of knowledge. And if the people who want to save themselves, I have provided what I call critical, correct, life-saving information that those who are bent on their own destruction, maybe through no fault of their own, they're going to be off the planet Earth. Yeah. All right, Dr. Cambon, uh, Dr. Kamal Cambon, the author of, you just, you just talked about his book. <laughs> Go out and download those e-books. 
uh, ASAP. And I'm looking at them online. You can go to the website. You can get them offline. So make sure you do that. Dr. Cam Kamal Kambon. Hey, D Dr. Kamal Kambon, look, uh, talk about, you know, you, you talk about psychological warfare, but how important is eating, man, and, uh, and using uh, the oppressor using food as a weapon? Get into that a little bit. Yeah, I was hoping to start in Brooklyn in uh, inner 7077, and we were going to the Bronx Market. I had a truck. I think all brothers need to have some kind of van, tools, so they can employ themselves. I've been big on that for 40 something years. And um, so we're going up to the Bronx Market early at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I was saying to him, Yeah, man, they eat white if you use food as a weapon. So if you look at uh, Codex Alimentarius, the FAO, uh, Food Agriculture Organization, they said on the Kodak that their plan, this is an international organization, they plan to exterminate at least two to four billion people on the planet through malnutrition and starvation. So if you look at what's going on in Yemen, starvation, malnutrition. If you see what's going on in Gaza Strip, Starvation, uh, so-called Libya, Iraq, starvation. In parts of Africa, starvation. So this is part of the global plan. The way from ADM, Archer, Daniels Midland, I always get it mixed up, y'all can check it out, but Archer Daniels, he was interviewed, and he said, they said, you know, you have, all, you are the great, you are the, biggest or largest producer of grain in the world. And the people in Africa, they can use, you have surplus grain, you can give them some grain. So why don't you give them the grain that they need in order to survive? In his response, I don't give them the grain because they don't have any money. So he keeps in on the genocide. So biological, chemical, through the food, definitely through the food. So in the 1970s, I read a book entitled Survival into the 21st Century by Victor Kovinsky with an introduction by Dick Gregory. As I read that book, man, I'm a top athlete. You know, I'm, a, I'm playing ball and, you know, I'm rough on the court. You know, I read that book, man, I stopped eating. I don't think I was in the pork that much, but I stopped eating pork, beef, chicken, fish, no dairy products, no white sugar, no white flour, no soda. So, man, these people are killing us. And then I looked around the community in Brooklyn, that side, and looked at the stores. And there was really no food in the stores. Crazy chips, pork rinds, pickle, soda, beer. And the people were being starved to death. So a lot of the death and diseases come from nutritional deficiencies. And uh, so this is how they get to us through the food, through the hamburgers. You know, through all of this mess, man. So if you look at it across the board, as I outlined, from psychological all the way from left to right, you'll see that there's biological chemical warfare through the chemtrails that contain the barium and aluminum, and then definitely through the foods and definitely through alcohol and drugs. I walked around mentally in my community where I grew up, in a 35 block radius, there were at least 15 liquor stores. There were about 12 bars and clubs, I think three pool halls. No place, I think there was one place where a person would go to actually get uh, some, some training and some skills, and that was a little trade school. So this is what they set up for us. You know, this whole thing about partying. So I tell people, you know, if you're gonna be out at night, going to these stupid concerts, and I, that's why I wrote the letter, you can see it, I think on my website, open letter to black FM state radio station. That's the gospel hip hop at R and B. All they do is pump concerts, buying new cars, you know, a lot of pathology. And uh, you know, eating all this food. So if you look around man, we fill we fill in the hospitals and we dying. And nobody was saying, you know, what's going on? Why are we dying like this? And it's coming through basically the food, the drugs, and the alcohol. And I think anybody that smokes free food, they're out of their mind. But those whiteys, those savages, they lace that stuff with all kind of 
madness, um, this is biological chemical warfare, vaccines. No, hey, I, I wrote it in all my books, so I just just go to the website and check it all out. Yeah, we, we definitely got to check it out. Uh, go, go and get those books for sure. Uh, and you talked about as well how, how white folks hide behind these corporations. And uh, while you're at it, talk about the 501c3 and, and how many of us out here uh, take the grants, take the money uh, from, from some of those white, uh, white boys, uh, the Rockefellers and all of them, uh, and the government's uh, grants and, and those. But, but talk about how white folks hide behind these corporations to, to, uh, to do many and much of their bidding. On my, uh, what's called the timeline, the second, the second scale is corporations. And that's what we see in the don't believe Dr. Kambon, all you got to do is look at Exhibit A, that Clinton Foundation and what they have done worldwide in open high 80. Uh, the, now that's separate. We have one of the time I got. I have a space. We have corporations. Next to corporations, we have foundations 
in trust to the trust fund and the foundations, again, this money laundering. This is where Whitey can hide the money. We have passed on, this is how they pass it on from generation to generation. So, I would do it as Let's Buy Black 365. L-E-T-S-B-E-Y Black 365 or Let's Buy Black dot com. And then it created an economic container. And she also has new business solutions to help black people who want to go in a form of business, how to be successful and leave, leave a legacy to not just have a little, what she calls a side hustle, right? but an actual business so that the business can flourish and then hire, hire people in the community so that these young people are not running around telling themselves they have something worthwhile to do. So the foundations and trust just simply money laundering operations to foster this white welfare mentality. Yeah. And uh, excellent, excellent, bro. Uh, excellent brothers out there, brothers and sisters. <laughs> it's an excellent program out there, Dr. Kamal. And uh, once again, I want to thank you for I want to thank you for coming on. Man. And uh, you didn't have to. Thank you for coming on uh, to WSYPLP 95.1 Sankofa Revolutionary Radio. Uh, and you said before doctors, doctors get you in these, these hospitals and they don't see you as human. They see you as organs. Uh, that organ harvesting and, 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 and it's big around the country and around the world. Uh, if you want to want to talk about that a little bit, uh, talk talk about organ harvesting. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, in my book, the last black man standing, it said that a, a brother who was dead in the hospital, his his organs are worth at least two and a half million dollars per organ. Um, the Chinese are big on on organs, on uh, harvesting the different organs. So this is a pathological world, man. And this white world, and I pointed out the different people that are against us, it's a pathological world, man. So what we're trying to do is save ourselves uh, and figure out what the survivors are going to do. Uh, so this is why I recommend my wife to go to my So I recommend People need counseling, man. Black people need direction and counseling. So she does, uh, her website is Onipa, O-N-I-P-A, O-N-I-P-A dot com. And she also does a uh, fight counseling. So people, you know, it's hard for people to admit the first reality that, you know, that they, that they need help. And so this is why Onipa and the Sankofa Journey dot com, where she takes Africans back to Ghana uh, to reconnect, you know, think of her, go back and fetch. In conjunction with the uh, Obama Combine, his website is a BB to me, A B I B I T U M I dot com, and where you can learn the languages and learn the culture and get into a new reality about how the world works and what things you can do to save yourself and your family by engaging in correct life-saving information. Now, when I say information, that's I am space formation. That means in alignment, information, in alignment with black liberation. Yep. I, I don't I don't know how much time you got, Doc, but I, I want you to get into what, what should be. You know, we, we go out here and do a lot of a protest and you can get into the, how effective that is but what should be the the end game as you talk about for us uh in solving this problem as we move forward man uh because the ancestors are welling out there man and uh how, how, what should be the end game uh for us moving forward and the end game is clear we need to have a winning end game and that winning end game that will lead us to and across the back of the finish line. See, if I call out these different groups, the Urban League and the uh, you know, Hebrew and the Moral Blue I call out these different groups. See, they don't have any end game. They just keep going on and on, generation after generation, no end game. So we are engaged in these, these idea formations 
that don't have a winning in-game formation or strategy and don't lead to a destination. It's very interesting in this idea of a destination. Black liberation is the destination. There's a good movie entitled Burn, B-U-R-N, with Marlon Brando and his brother. And the movie is named as Jose Dolores. Jose Dolores starts out as a young guy uh, on, on his island that was colonized or vampired on by the British. So ultimately, uh, Jose Dolores realizes, you know, hey man, we're out there, we're doing all the work and these lions are running around in white suits drinking mint peanut. So he engages in a revolution. One of, men, one of his men is caught, and Marlon Brando is grilling him. He says, what does Jose Dolores say? So the soldier says, Jose Dolores says, it's better to know where to go and not know how to get there than how to go and not know where you're going. See, so we know how to go. We know how to go to the concert. We know how to go to the malls. You know, we know how to do and engage in madness. But if you have a destination, and that destination is black liberation, there are a lot of things you would not do because you know that you are being a cruel savage. All right, Dr. Kambon, Kamal Kambon, uh, 17 books. Tell our people out there once again how they can get your books and how they can help you uh, help us uh, and your family. Uh, get, in, get into that as uh, before we end. Okay. Um, my website is Kamal, K-A-M-A-U, Kambon, K-A-M-B-O-N dot org. Uh, my son's site is a bb 2 me a b i b i t u m i t a s a a bb 2 me concertcom There's Let's Buy Black. Dot com. There's also new business spelled N U business three S's in the middle. Business solutions new business solutions dot com. There's Oniba O N I P A dot com. That's my uh, rush psychological counseling. She also has a uh, Sankofa journey or Sankofa journey dot com where we take groups to Ghana specifically West Africa to get them to reconnect with their heritage and their ancestors. And by the way, I recommend that people don't get that uh, ancestor or whatever it is, DNA. That's, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's authentic, man. So uh, these are the websites you can go to uh, to try to get some correct life-saving information to help you and your family to get on the, on the correct Campbell, I want to thank you very much. Black Liberation. Black Liberation, one for our solution. All right, Dr. Kamal Campbell, thank you very much. Yes, sir. All right, Dr. Kamal Campbell, uh, right there. Uh, we're going to open up the lines. Uh, we, don't, we don't have uh, long. Of course, we've got, uh, got at least 10 minutes. I know uh, some of you have been uh, trying to call in and get us here, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll open it up. Just want to introduce you. We'll get the brother back on and get into this a lot more. A lot of you may not have known about this brother out there, uh, of course, who have been doing much, much work for so, so long. And uh, as, as many of our elders and ancestors have tried to do, uh, but we've been trained and, and miseducated and educated uh, to only, uh, if it ain't white, of course, we, we don't, we don't want to have anything to do with it uh, if it's not white. Uh, you're, you're on the air. How you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing fine. Yeah, man, I, mean, I was just cut one to tell you I appreciate that. Uh, that, was, that, was a, that was a good one. I appreciate that one. All right. Uh, you, hey, brother, you're welcome, man. I don't know who this is, but we want to thank you for, for at least appreciating uh, a brother and scholar like that, Kamal Kambon, uh, who's been doing much, much work. And uh, here's the thing, though, brother. 
our people out there with the condition that we're in, of course, we don't take stuff like this serious. We don't take anything serious. And uh, we're just lying down, man, and dying. All right, any, any, any thoughts on that? That's great, uh, brother, but and I, I know that you mentioned Dr. Amos Wilson. If you ever listen to any of Dr. Amos, Amos Wilson's stuff I read his book, it's scary, man. The, the psychological aspect that he approaches from, and the dude approaches it from a wide awake, I mean, beyond the, the average uh, uh, conscious person would consider uh, work, but he approaches it from that whole psychological aspect that just scares the hell out of you if you pay attention and look around and you can see that what he's talking about is what happened. <laughs> no, no question about it. You mentioned Amos, Dr. Amos Wilson, the ancestor. Uh, folks out there, if you're not familiar with this doctor and the brother who just left our program, go check it out. Like this brother has said, his book, one I recommend, and I recommend all of them, but Blueprint for Black Power is one, and you heard Dr. Cam Bond mention some others out there, Black on Black Violence, I got them all. Uh, so then you can go out there and get this book and use them, man, and help the people who need the most help, and that's the Africans, man, worldwide. Uh, anything you want to leave us on there, brother? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, brother, you know what? Uh, I wanted to ask you to ask that brother if he would uh, try to make it to the African World Festival in Detroit uh, next, this coming summer. Uh, man, I want you to make it to that thing too, brother, the African World Festival in Detroit this coming summer, around the end of the summer. That's one of the biggest uh, African festivals here in the country, brother. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up, because a lot of folks out there uh, probably are not familiar, and thank you for bringing things like that up to our attention, man. We, we don't understand how uh, the knowledge that we out in the audience have and can relay and disseminate to our people, and just like you just did, telling us about this, this conference, a lot of our people don't know, uh, and they got, we got family in Detroit and all over. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit about that, man. Well, they have it every year, brother. People come from all over the world to visit this thing, and it's a, 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 it's a festival for all the Africans, wherever you are in the diaspora, if you can reach their location, that's where they, they all gather that once a year. It goes on for, I think, approximately, I don't know if it's three days or a whole month, but uh, it's a lot of bringing going on there, a lot of uh, uh, the whole African culture, the food, the clothes, the, 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 the drums, it's all that, but, but, but I'm calling out people there for a specific matter, but they're not getting to that more that you want to say. Yeah, all right, bro, we we'll, we'll appreciate that. We need to have that same thing in Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you for calling in. Yes, sir. Uh, include me on that as well. Like I, I told my chief brother, one thing we got to push is that in Google Cyber 365, we need to practice those principles every day throughout the year. That's going to bring us closer and keep us in the practice of what we uh, come together for on a, a, a week on an annual basis for one week out of that year. We need to be doing this thing all throughout the year and bringing more people to it as we do it. And there's no question about it. And I'm glad you brought that up because we, we, we ceremonial as hell, man. And, uh, and we, we, we've been on this airways two years, and we talk, we talk consistently and over and over about the Nguza Saba and the principles and economic withdrawal and all this. I'm talking about total withdrawal in perpetuity. And we talk about these things all the time, and we, we ceremonial, man. We get into it at this season, around this time of year, and then the damn year after Kwanzaa, we don't hear anything else to next Kwanzaa. So we got to stop. We got to stop the foolishness across the board and do it like you, in perpetuity. All right, man. I appreciate you calling, my brother. All right, all right. Well, hey, thank thank you, brother, for calling in. And uh, look, we don't have but a couple minutes. I appreciate everybody out there. Uh, we don't have but a couple minutes. Uh, we've got a lot of folks out there has been telling us about, uh, and brother, brother Hatcher, thank you for, for responding to Brother Dietrich. Thank you for responding as, uh, as well about the, uh, the program uh, today. And as we said many, many times, we don't receive any grants uh, from anyone. We don't want your money, not even from the foundations out there, dirty money. We don't want it. 
We don't want the government money, local, state, federal, none of it. Keep your dirty money. And uh, we'll move forward by doing coming out of our pockets and uh, the listener sponsored radio, uh, the community sponsoring us. So, look, <clears throat> we got to get out of here. Uh, of course, make sure you come back, though. Come back tomorrow. We'll have our good brother. Uh, brother Jeannie is going to be back with us tomorrow. So make sure you're, you're there uh, to engage with him. We'll talk about those very important issues once again. So you want to make sure you come back and do that. We got we got to get out of here. So make sure I want to leave you in the words of Chairman Fred Hampton uh, Sr. I want to wish you peace, y'all. If you're willing to fight for it, 